Welcome back to The Journey of the Abandoned House, episode 24, part two. There's framing, sheathing, windows, mortar work, electrical. Let's get into it. So this week I'm gonna host you guys from my backyard. We're gonna go for my little loop trail. And we're gonna get right into what was not covered in last week's video, which was the details surrounding the far corner of the house that had been completely rotted out, that had to be reframed and sheathed. And, you know, that, that project was actually done several weeks ago, but there was an issue during the framing of it and I just didn't didn't finish it up so and there was a the front sheathing was done but wasn't done to my my liking so I ripped that back apart redid it and then I had to reframe the the side and next to the propane tanks and that had to be all jacked up because I like I said we had worked on that a long time ago and then that side had started to sag so I had to jack, jack it up blah 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 got the frame in no big deal resheathed it or sheathed that and then resheathed the front so that's all done not only am I having to deal with just literally a hundred years of people messing with this structure and doing things sometimes correctly sometimes not and rebuilding it so that she can be an amazing home for someone and having to deal with you know, material shortages and all that stuff, this job has been killing tools left and right. I have gone through three bottle jacks, one screw jack, uh, a crescent wrench, I think three different pry bars I've broken on this job, and a hammer handle, you know, the normal stuff. And now I'm on my third circular saw. Earlier this month, I uh, burned up the Milwaukee rear handle one. Now that's my go-to saw. I use that thing like every day. So that's kind of normal. And then my, my backup saw over there, just burned that one up. Now I've had that thing since I think 2002. So I can't be, I can't complain about it. It doesn't owe me anything. It's been a good saw. And it's been my backup saw for several years now. So, you know, she was due. And then the job came with a pile of circular saws. I've given most of them away. And I kept one. I burned that one up. And so I had to run out and buy a new saw. I am not, not happy about this. <laughs> this job has been, it's killing everything but my spirit, I swear. <laughs> All right, mortar work. So there were several sections that needed to be sealed up. One was the continuation of that corner. There was a section that just needed a little bit of stone and mortar up in the upper left-hand corner. And then there, Dix, or the, the room, I don't know what to call this room. It's just a weird little, I don't know. Let's call it the garden room. Because it's right next to the exterior, which you go to the backyard. So if you were to have a garden backyard, I guess you would put all your tools there. So let's call it the garden room. The garden room has two wood walls and two stone walls. And where the wood interacts with the stone, it was gapped out. So I decided to mortar that in. And so I beaded a silicone along the grain end of all the boards and then fed the mortar to it. So in case the mortar were to absorb any water, it would, uh, you know, not wick into the wood. That's important. Come on, dog. Oh, there was a window in the front bedroom that needed to be removed, framed and sheathed. That was probably the fastest window removal and reframe I have ever done. Start to finish, 
was under an hour. That was, that was impressive. So we're in a space that I call the bike room. It's off of the driveway. And you're, the part you're looking at here is just a new piece of plywood. Well, it's reused plywood, but anyway. Uh, I installed this today because we're gonna be spray foaming this area and I needed to correct the gap that was created back when we jacked up this mud sill. If you remember a while back, there was this lap joint that wasn't protected underneath and it had sagged. I'm gonna jack this all the way up until I get it back to level again, upstairs. And you can see just how far it sagged. It's a solid three and a quarter, three and a half inches. So the plywood that was here didn't fit. I reframed and then st stuck this guy on and we're all set. All right, so when I described how this was repaired, now it's time to get in here and fill this with rock and mortar. Get that all filled in. And then be ready for spray foam in here. Except that I just remembered, we better, better run some wire in here too, just in case I decide to put lighting in here, which, which means I will. There's a header and it runs the full length of the building and above the staircase and in the mud room I'm gonna have to leave that header exposed and it's gonna look fine out in that space because I'm gonna have a timber frame exposed so it's all gonna tie up it's gonna look really nice but in the primary suite this is the only wood accent that will be other than the trim work around the windows and it's only on this wall so I can either add this feature on the other wall and have that exposed header look all the way through, or I can cut this one back so that it's flush with the ceiling plane, or I can fur this wall out and make it the same plane as the header, and then the sheet rock can go over the top of all of it, like we did in the back bedroom. Or, let me show you what I think I'm going to do. So this is the header I'm talking about. And you see, it's a full 2 inch plus that it's proud of. And then you have this 2x4 here, which is what the ceiling framing is tying into, which is no big deal. We just cut that all out. And so what I think I should do is cut this guy out cut this guy out and then I have this is this the wall plane and be nice and smooth done and then I can just cut myself some new uh, stiffeners or blocking that can replace these guys yep that's what I'm gonna do Monday morning before spray foam I've got a small list to accomplish but I can do it because luckily <laughs> I got a call from the spray foamer and he had to push out one day and I am thrilled. <laughs> it's the only time you, you get a call from a contractor and say, hey, I can't make it today, but I can come in tomorrow. I'm thrilled. That means I can slow it down a notch. I can really take my time, do all the little money details that I really enjoy doing and getting this thing 100% ready for spray foam. And so, with that said, I'm gonna get right into it. We have an exterior wall right here, and I need to run electric from the outlet down below me, up into the ceiling, and over into the little hallway that is next to the new staircase. So right there. I need to get a wiring out that way so that we can have lighting down that little that little hallway down there. So, uh, I guess first things first, right? Let's get some wire down here 
and the drill, so the fish wire up and through. You guys remember last week when I was talking about not wanting to miss family movie night because my daughter picks the movies and I just don't know what I'd get to watch? Well, my wife, what, sort of, came up with an idea. She doesn't know she came up with this idea yet. She's actually learning the same time you are. That <laughs> You and I can play a game. Andy back here is going to give you a hint of what the movie was and you can throw down in the comments down below, right below this video, what you think the movie was that I got to watch. Grace and Grand. Grace and Grand. Grace and Grand. Whoa. Yeah, how was that? Well done, Andy. Well done. Thanks, buddy. And then there's electrical. I am so glad I had that extra day, that Monday, to get things done. Honestly, I wouldn't have had, wouldn't able to accomplish it. It wouldn't have happened. So I ended up having to wire up that back room, what we're calling the garden room now, with lighting and the switch for that and the three-way and all that. Wasn't too difficult, um, more the same where I had to, you know, blind drill a hole and then hopefully intersect it. Worked out without any problems with that. That was easy. It's chilly this morning. My hands are getting cold. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, you know, hammer that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that as well. And those who have subscribed, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And I hope I was able to fit everything in there because I'm really ready to get this week behind me. That was a hard push. I'm glad it's over, but I'm glad I got a lot done. And you know, building those connections with that spray foamer, that's really important as well. And he's a great guy. I really liked working with him. And, well, until I get this next project done, I won't see you guys until then. So, I hope you guys enjoy, and I will catch you up when I get back to Frankie. Good boy. Ah. <laughs>